Hello everyone, Dylan here, and welcome back to another reaction. So today, we'll be reacting to three disturbing true scary stories by Mr. Nightmare. So, this came out yesterday. So, all credits goes to Mr. Nightmare, and my channel's not monetized, so I'm not making no money from my videos recently, or for now. Uh, I'm not going to look into that, but... Anyways, go subscribe to Mr. Nightmare, and it's like 7 in the morning right now, be it like an hour before I, I go, go on the bus to go to school, but anyways, I'm all ready for school, and I got some time to make some videos for you guys, and yeah, I mean, it would have been better if I woken up like a long time ago and then reacted to this, because... I don't know, I think it's better in the dark, uh, when everyone else is sleeping except for me, and stuff like that. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy, and let's begin. I live in a small, peaceful town. I don't live in a place where you have to worry about walking alone at night. I share a one-story house with my sister, but she's hardly ever home. She has another place in Florida that she spends most of her time. There's about 100 to 200 feet between each house on my block, and then there's some woods across the street. I have a daily routine. I get home from work, make dinner, shower, relax a little, then go for a run, come back and have a light snack, then go to bed. It was a mm. work night like any other. I was going for my nightly run, and when I came back to my house, there was a random white van parked across the street. I took notice of it because hardly ever would random cars park on any of these streets. Our little neighborhood has very little through traffic. I looked at it as I walked backwards to my front door, and I could tell there was someone sitting inside of it, though I couldn't see anything oh, regarding shoot. what they were doing. I don't know if the glass was tinted or if it was just because it was dark out. Later that night, I was hearing some weird sounds coming from outside. It was like a scraping sound. I, looked out my I mean, if his out windows are tinted, then sometimes no it's not me. because of the dark my sometimes. My first guess was a neighbor doing something in his yard. I went back to whatever I was doing, and that was the night. The following day was a Friday, the last day in my work week. After work, I did proceed with my regular schedule. I went on my nightly run a little earlier tonight, since it was Friday and I had plans with some friends. I got back from my run, imagining the van to be there again, but it wasn't this time. I went out with my friends to a comedy club, and I didn't get back until late. I let myself into the house and locked the door. It was a long night and I was feeling tired, so I hurried up with the getting ready for bed process. After turning off the bedside light in my room and laying down, that's when things were finally silent enough for me to pick up on some weird thumping and rustling sounds. I felt like they were coming from inside of the walls. It's only a two bedroom house, it's not big. I put my ear up to one of the walls, and indeed heard something going on in there. I knocked on the wall and the noises stopped. This was a cause for concern, as I assumed it was a rodent or a wild raccoon. I went out to the living room, and passing by the windows, I looked outside and saw that white van parked outside again. I opened my front door and stepped out to the front stoop to look at the van. I didn't see anyone sitting in it this time. Two nights in a row of this now, something was going on. I walked barefoot to the side of my house to look for possible holes in the walls. Wait, for so to is crawl that through. guy? And I came to the outside. I'm wondering if that guy in that van lives the house next door. Side crawl space door. It was cracked open. And the Wait, since he said that like a hundred feet, so it has to be in his walls. It's not really next door. If it is, that's... that's crazy. The lock was snapped off. I hadn't paid attention to this door in weeks. I pulled it open a little more, and without a phone or flashlight in my hands, all I could do was lean inside and squint my eyes in the pitch blackness of the crawl space. I heard the oh. faintest little sounds of pebbles scraping against the concrete floor. At first, my naive mind was thinking it was an animal. So the sounds turned more aggressive, and more closely resembled human footsteps marching to the crawlspace door. And then, just barely, I could see a person crouch walking towards me. 
I slammed the door and twisted the knob, but without a lock it wouldn't do anything. I ran back inside my house and called the police. While on the phone, I instantly attributed the crawl space door to the scraping sounds I heard the night before. The next time I went to the window while on the phone, the van in the street was gone. Police came and I showed them the crawl space. We had to use flashlights as the crawl space doesn't have any lights installed. We found something disturbing. In the left hmm. corner, there were cut marks in the roof of the crawl space as if the intruder was trying to saw his way into the house. The oh, only info damn. I could give them was the white van parked in front of the house. We don't have cameras, nor did I see what he or she even looked like. They never came back though. I'd imagine because I caught on to what was probably supposed to be a silent operation. Damn, you could have at least had security cameras or something had a outside. In the Arapahoe National Forest of Colorado. It's a seven hour drive from my home. I don't often go with my parents or siblings, if ever. I go alone for the purpose of hunting and detoxing. I've probably been up there a total of 40 times in my life. The last time I went was a few months ago, but I don't really like going alone anymore. Here's why. It was 2017. I just pulled my truck up the old dirt road onto the grass of the property. There's no real driveway, we just park wherever on the grass really. The house isn't huge, it's modest but nice for a vacation home. I parked up next to the front deck. This was in the dead of summer but the breeze there was still nice and cool. I let myself into the house using the keypad lock. We don't use physical keys in fear of losing or forgetting them. I was the first one there in quite some time so I had to turn on the electricity and water heater. In the meantime, I unpacked and ate the lunch I brought with me. I also threw away any mouse and bug traps that were left out that caught mice and bugs. It's actually quite a problem in the house. After all this was done, I started setting up my hunting gear, which my dad and I leave in a big back closet. By this point, the sun was on its way down. It was around 6 o'clock. A laughter from outside caught my attention. I marched from the kitchen to the living room to look out the big window that looked into the woods. I looked into the woods and I didn't see anyone, so I cranked the heavy window open and listened. The laughter belonged to multiple children, like a small group. This was our property though, that meant these kids were trespassing, probably up to no good. I went outside through the back door to the woods, trying oh, to follow for, the laughter. Oh, I thought like for a second that like you couldn't see anyone at all, but you heard laughter. I thought like... He said he's gonna say that the woods are like haunted or something. I kept going oh deeper God. into the woods, and the laughter stayed the same distance away from me, though. Eventually, I gave up because it seemed like the kids were running away anyway. The next day, while posted up in Why the tower that my dad in the built woods, for deer though? hunting in the woods, well, like, I heard the sound of those kids laughing again. Noting that meant they were once again on our property, I decided to call my dad and ask what to do. He told me to chase them off the property if I saw them. So I shot around into the air. I forfeited any game for the sole purpose of chasing the kids away, but it worked of course. The sound of the laughing stopped right away. I knew now it would be pointless staying posted up in the tower, so I called it for the day and went back to the house. Hopefully they don't come well back. Anyway. That night I slept with all the windows open to get some air circulating, maybe help me with my headache. Then it came back. The sounds of the children this crazy hour, it had to be past like 11 at this point. I climbed up the bed to look out the window. Of course, it was too dark out there. I had enough now though. I grabbed my Winchester from the closet and a flashlight as well. I didn't have intentions of shooting kids, just scaring them off with a round or two. I went out the back door towards the woods again, where the laughter was coming from. The laughter was louder than any other time before now. Like it seemed like they were 20 meters away at most. I yelled in a strong, commanding voice to get off my land. I scanned the woods with my flashlight. It wasn't a very powerful one, though. Then every muscle in my body basically went limp when the volume of the laughter went from 30 to 100 in a matter of half a second. Then something landed on the ground next to me. It was an old-looking speaker. The sounds of kids laughing was blasting through it. I picked it up and threw it back in the woods, then aimed the light back in the woods. At one point, what? I'm still not sure of it though, but I thought I saw a person standing at the edge of my light. I aimed my Winchester into the air and fired, then yelled a threat like come any closer the next round goes through your skull. 
I then ran back inside the back door and locked it. I closed every curtain. I considered calling the sheriff's department, but all the way up here, any police call would take at least half an hour to an hour. I was better off fleeing altogether. As I packed my bag, I heard a smudge on the living room window. I waited a few minutes in an idle position before slightly moving oh my the curtains, God, man. revealing something written in blood on the glass. I didn't take the time to read it. I finished in packing my bag, took my gun, took a deep breath, and went outside. I locked the door with the code as quickly as possible, then ran for the car as if my life depended on it. I turned the car on and put it in drive I before it had I time to finish with those he, I beats. thought he saw the kids I spoke with my laughing. dad on the way home. He told me well, I was we, right we, to leave. Anything in the house wasn't worth my that life. That does not make any sense. I stayed at a nearby motel that night. My dad came the next day. I met him at the house. Whatever was written on that window in blood was wiped completely off. The house wasn't broken into, and we couldn't find the speaker type thing that was thrown at me. We stayed a mm -hmm. couple nights, then went home. I don't know who was out there or why they were targeting me. I really hope that blood was animal blood, though. Oh my god. Why would you hope? Why would that guy hope? I was home alone one weekend. How that it's myself. any kind of blood. I had a couple friends over the first night, and I stayed like, up pretty late both nights. I was 14 at the time, just started high school, and my parents had just started trusting me enough to leave the house to myself. <laughs> Come on, man. I this love animals. Don't do this to me, man. Pretty late. When we all decided to call it a night, Jeez. I by myself. Halfway through my walk home, I noticed the car seemed to be following me. So I started to jog home, and the car started flashing its lights. At this hour of the night, I could only assume potential danger, so I turned my jog into a full-fledged run. Damn, so that to has to house, be like outside the windows. Moments later, almost midnight or uh, in front of the house probably later. Came out from the oh, jeez. They started running up to my front door. I started panicking. The doorbell started to ring, and they started pounding on the door aggressively. I suddenly felt like my life was being threatened. I ran to my room, which is on the lower level of the house by the back. Why would they do that? I tried to though? get my parents on the phone, but they wouldn't answer. They were definitely asleep. For a 14-year-old boy, I was scared to death. Oh now, shoot! The intense knocking moved to my window. Fourteen. Okay, now I kind of know why. Now, listen. Learn some karate or some korbakai or something, and then. Well, it's well. Well, be be 18 or older. And then learn some karate or, or something. Have a body car near you or at all times or something like that. Honestly, I, I don't know what to say about that situation. I them to go away and they yelled something back, but it was muffled. I left my room to hide in my parents' room and call the police. I made a phone call explaining that I was followed home and someone was trying to break into my house. The banging started at my parents' bedroom window now as if they somehow knew which room I was going to every time. I screamed, go away. The 911 dispatcher told me not to do that and to keep quiet and stay hidden. But the person banging on the glass started yelling through the closed window, and now I could hear more clearly what he was saying. He yelled there was a person in my house. Then he yelled someone followed me home and might be inside my house. Ignoring the 911 dispatcher, I went to the window and asked in a loud voice so he could hear me, what are you talking about? He yelled at me to call the police and stay locked inside of a room because someone followed me home and went to our- Wait, so who's that guy that was banging on the window? Could that be the guy that broke into the house? Could have been in that car before? Oh my god, I'm so confused. It's crazy. Exactly what the man yelled to me. She said don't trust him just yet and to stay in a locked room until the police would arrive at my front door. I didn't know whether the things the man was saying were true or not. Not until hearing footsteps outside my parents' bedroom near the living room. The footsteps clonked down the wooden floor of the bedroom hallway. I heard each door in the hall being opened until they got to my parents' bedroom door. The doorknob twisted, but since it was locked, obviously the door couldn't be pushed open. Wait, so who the are those closed. two the guys? The are they the together or are they like... I kicked the door down as all I heard were loud bangs. Eventually the bangs stopped. Imagine they gave up. 
I didn't hear footsteps walking away, but this is why you should not let a 14 year old line with the dispatcher. She told me police or 18, to like 17, 18 or younger back, be home alone. The point of entry, most likely. They were able to enter through the front door, though, as apparently the intruder Every left time when the I front. watch these uh, freaking the scary stories, after the intruder every time when I'm home alone, I look around me and then see if I hear any noises or someone. I met the police in the living room. The man who was outside banging on the windows was also there. He told this whole story that as I was walking home, he saw some older man crouching in bush after bush, following me in a manner that conveyed he meant harm. He followed me all the way to my house, as a matter of fact. That's why the guy in the car was following me, as well as flashing his lights. I called my mom, who picked up on the third try. I didn't want to call my dad because I was scared of how angry he'd be. I spoke why with my mom. Why would he be angry at you, man? Oh, no, I'm not talking about Mr. Nightmare. You, you know. Yo, that's nuts. That's crazy. So you, so you have... To my mom. A guy that's flashing your lights and you're worried about him and then you go inside and then you're worried about the a guy who, who's bang, banging your window and then uh, now you're worried about what that what that guy is saying the one who's banging on the window saying that there's another person in your house and then you get even twice as more terrified that you are now oh my god the police dropped me off my friend's house that night to sleep there my parents started driving home that night. And got a truly home early the next morning. nightmare, Mr. Nightmare. A police officer parked outside our house for a few hours before driving off. Nothing was stolen at all to our knowledge. I mean, that's the good. The intruder didn't break in to rob us. That means he really was just after me. And he came after me in my own house. Oh my god. Three scary true lockdown horror stories re upload. Guys, let me know if I reacted to that one already. The lockdown horror stories. I mean, it's an upload, so. Probably did. Probably didn't. Maybe. I I, I don't know. Damn, man. The, these, scare, these stories were really terrifying. Oh, my battery's low. Um, anyways, um, I'm going to go relax. Actually, a half an hour before I, I go on my bus. Um, I would rate this video a 10 out of 10. It's truly ch chilling. And Mr. Nightmare's stories are fascinating, but they're terrifying. But they're truly entertaining, too. Wow. And I, I wasn't able to upload this, record this last night when it came out, because I was sleeping when it came out. And... Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.